Hello everybody, this is Trevor Sullivan. I'm on Stack Overflow today, and I came across a question that was asking about custom RoboCopy progress bars in PowerShell. So basically what this uh, asker is looking to do is take a RoboCopy script that copies some files t from a folder to his server on a daily basis or on a regular basis of some inter interval and he wants to make a progress bar in PowerShell. So what I wanted to do is show you the solution that I came up with on how to achieve this. So I wrote this uh, script called uh, copy with progress. It's a PowerShell advanced function uh, defined as a script function rather than a compiled function. And we have a couple of parameters here. We have a source and destination and we have a gap which is simply used to uh, restrict the um, speed that the robocopy utility copies at so we're basically emulating a slow network link here uh, we have a reporting gap which is basically the number of milliseconds that the uh, progress bar loop is going to check for progress and that's pretty much it all the other parameters are kind of defined uh, as common parameters statically here in the function and uh, basically what we're doing is we're defining some robocopy parameters we're doing the slash mirror uh, parameter which basically says mirror everything in the source directory to the target directory uh, we have the NP parameter which which uh, suppresses the progress percentage and you might ask yourself well, why why do we want to suppress the progress percentage don't we want that information to help build this uh, report well the fact is actually no we don't want the robocopy progress percentage because that only represents the progress for the current file that it's copying on uh, also it kind of confuses the log file uh, because it puts a bunch of extra crap in there that we don't really want to see so moving on, we have the slash nc, uh, which doesn't log whether it's an existing file, a new file, or so on. Uh, we use the bytes parameter to show all file sizes in bytes, and we'll use that to help calculate our um, progress. We have njh, which uh, tells it not to show the job header, which is like a you know 16-line introduction uh, that RoboCopy puts out typically. So we're going to suppress that because we don't care about that header information. Um, and we're also going to suppress the job summary all the way at the end, which takes up another few lines uh, that we simply don't care about. And then I think we skipped the NDL one because these aren't really in order and I also don't have a description for it. Uh, basically, NDL suppresses the uh, current directory that um, is being operated on by RoboCopy. So uh, those are just some of the common parameters that we've defined um, up here we have a regular expression that's going to parse out the digits uh, which represent the number of bytes that are copied um, f for a particular file. So if you have, you know, five files that are copied and each, fi each file is, you know, 100 bytes in size, um, that'll show up as a separate line item in the log file that RoboCopy spits out. So we basically need to parse out just the file size in bytes. So moving on, um, the architecture's function basically looks like the following. We have a region of code here that simply takes care of the staging. So what is staging? Well, basically what this little section of the function does is it calls RoboCopy, uh, but it puts it into a logging mode only. So we use the slash L parameter here to tell RoboCopy to only log the information without actually making any file system modifications. So it's not going to create any folders, copy any files, delete any files, nothing. It's simply going to do logging mode. We're going to use the log parameter to specify the output directory for the log file. And then finally here we're going to substitute those RoboCopy common parameters uh, that we defined just a second ago. So once we define those parameters to put, put it into logging only mode, we're going to call start process and kick off RoboCopy with those arguments. So what's going to happen is RoboCopy is going to run and finish because we have the wait parameter there so it's going to hold, it's going to suspend the script until RoboCopy returns and it's going to output to this log path that we specified. And that log path is going to contain all of the uh, log entries for, that represent each individual file. And it's not going to have any of the, the header information, the summary information, and any of the other information that we don't care about because we suppressed all that with these uh, RoboCopy parameters up here. So we only get the, the, the content, the log content that we are interested in. 
So then when it's finished running, we're going to grab all the contents of that log file. We're going to count the, lum the number of lines in that file. And that's going to be the number of files that are going to get copied. Now we need to know one other thing because the, the number of files doesn't really matter. What we ultimately care about is the number of bytes that are going to be copied in total. So we, we use our regular expression here to parse out the number of bytes for each file and then add that to a running total called bytes total. And then we simply log a message using the verbose uh, PowerShell message stream and we say what are the total number of bytes that are going to be copied. So that's the staging area. So we're basically getting the number of bytes that are going to be copied. We're getting the number of files that are going to be copied when the actual RoboCopy job runs. The next step is to actually kick off the RoboCopy job. So we're going to define a new log file path for the actual real RoboCopy log when it actually starts doing the file copies, the directory creations, file deletions, timestamp creations, and things like that. Then we define our arguments. Um, we're going to specify a log file path. We're going to specify those common parameters here in this last substitution. And then the one additional parameter that we're going to do on the actual RoboCopy file copy uh, part of the uh, process is we're going to add the interprocess inter gap or inner packet gap. And that's going to basically be a, uh, like a 200 millisecond gap between file copies so that we're not you know, really quickly copying files. Because I have SSDs in my laptop, the file copy would typically go very quickly uh, unless I was copying a very, very large amount of data. So because I'm working with some rather small files here, I'm simply using this inner packet gap to slow down the process artificially. Now you could remove that to speed up the process or completely eliminate it uh, when you actually go to run it, but that's why I parameterized it up here. So all you have to do is set the gap to zero. So that's going to kick off the actual RoboCopy job. Now the difference with this start process here is that we don't have the wait parameter on it. And we, we do have the pass through parameter on this particular start process command. And what that's going to do is return an object that represents the RoboCopy process. So what we're going to do after that is we're going to come down to this progress bar loop. So we're going to kick off that process asynchronously and the PowerShell script is going to continue to run. So the next area of code that the PowerShell script is going to hit is this while loop that basically checks to see if the RoboCopy process has exited. And if it has not exited, then every gap number of seconds that we want to report on, it's going to calculate the number of bytes that have been copied based on the new kind of production log file. It's going to parse out the bytes and add them together into the bytes copied uh, variable. We're also going to total up the number of files that have been copied thus far, which again doesn't really matter quite as much, but it's useful information just for, you know, debugging and understanding the process. So we're just going to write that out to the verbose stream. And then finally, because we know the number of bytes, the total number of bytes that will be copied from the staging area, and we know the current number of bytes that have been copied uh, thanks to this while loop here, we can basically calculate the percentage of the process that is completed. So over here when we call write progress we can say the percent complete is the bytes copied divided by the total number of bytes multiplied by a hundred. That's your percent complete. So after that's done, after the RoboCopy job has finished, we're going to output some useful information that you can use in your PowerShell script uh, when you wrap this function in it. So you can see what the total number of bytes copied were and the no total number of files that were copied. So really quick, I'm going to speed this up and we're going to go through a really quick test of this function. We're going to create a test directory, uh, which is just going to be a GUID folder under your temp folder. We're going to generate some test files. So we're going to generate a bunch of files with random sizes. It just has the capital A character with a, a random number of times inside of it. So we're going to generate these text files. We're going to generate a target directory that's going to be our destination folder that's empty and then create it. Then we're going to call the copy with progress function. And so it's going to copy everything from this source directory to the target directory and then it's going to spit out this function result right here. 
Then we're going to add some more files to the source directory to emulate kind of changes over time. And then we're going to call the function again just to validate that it works correctly with a delta number of files. So let's go ahead and execute this code. First we're going to select the entire function and hit F8 to define the function. Next we'll run this block of code that generates the source test directory. Then we'll run the next section that creates our target directory. And then we're going to call the copy with progress function. And you'll notice that the progress bar shows the total number of bytes that's going to be copied and the current number of bytes that has been copied until the job is finished. Now we're going to add some more files. So we're going to generate some new files in that source directory and we're going to call the function again to see what the result is. And as you can see, the progress indicator is working properly showing the number of bytes that have been copied. And as you can see, we have this PS custom object getting returned to us that we could capture into a variable before the function, like result. And then we could use that in our script to, you know, maybe email an administrator and say, hey, this number of bytes was copied, um, you know, so on and so forth. So I hope that was useful for you guys. I hope you appreciate this code. I'm going to be posting it on Stack Overflow again at the custom RoboCopy progress bar in PowerShell question. The question ID is 13883404. Again, my name is Trevor Sullivan. I'm on Twitter at PCGeek86, and you can email me at PCGeek86 at gmail.com. Thank you.